This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Day zero. Time out. Glasgow. Scotland. Almost a decade later. I've got to go. From my bed, I sit upright, so forcefully that the duvet lifts and crumples at my feet. I've got to do this. Now. I'm not talking to anyone but myself here. In fact, I'm alone at home. I've only been back for a few days. After months away due to a bunch of filming commitments, as well as promotional work and business projects, I should be content with just lying still. In just the last four weeks, I've hurried through departure and arrival zones in airports from Mexico to L.A., New York, and Chicago. Not that it's a chore. I love being busy. But by rights, I should be happy loafing around in my sweatpants doing absolutely nothing. Instead, thanks to jet lag and a a little hangover from a date with my whiskey collection the night before, I can't stop my mind from roaming. I could just do it, I reason with myself, as I know the rational part of my mind needs to get on board with the plan. Couldn't I? Since I unlocked the front door and dumped my bags in the hall, I found myself aimlessly killing time. I feel restless. I can't sleep at night, only to doze through the day. Frankly, it feels like I've forgotten how to live without a work schedule. All I've been doing is drifting from one room to another, as if reminding myself that I actually live here. Mealtimes have merged into snacking sessions. I've experimented with porridge toppings, though nothing beats frozen blueberries, peanut butter and a pinch of cinnamon, and dared the salt and pepper pots to judge me for enjoying eggs with ketchup and hot sauce. A wee trip to the gym towards tea time has been my sole reason for getting dressed, albeit in a random collection of clothing. Spring meets autumn winter collection, circa 2009. After that, I tune into reruns of Back to the Future and low-budget police chase documentaries. What should be quality downtime just feels like one dull blur. <laughs> The new coffee machine I've struggled to learn how to use finishes dispensing some spectacular atomic black liquid into my favourite porcelain mug. Two cups are enough to get me out of bed. Three would be ideal. I'm annoyed at myself because I've been looking forward to this break immensely. I considered myself fortunate in that I was in an industry that had found a way to function through yet another pandemic year. The whole world had been affected, and we were no different. Shooting films and television had become potentially limiting in lots of ways, but I was so grateful to be in one of a few sectors able to continue. Now I had a break, and yet I find myself struggling to rest for more than a day. I'm not hyperactive, I crave downtime, but I feel guilty if I'm not grafting and pushing myself in some capacity. During this last year, we finally managed to shoot season six of Outlander. It was shorter but more intense and with a darker tone. In my role as the Highland warrior Jamie Fraser, the cast and crew have become more like family to me since the show first went into production in 2013. Even though this later season contained just eight episodes, it proved to be one of the hardest. With the new guidelines and restrictions in our lives, we pulled together like never before to make it something special. It had left me feeling exhausted and looking forward to this short break. Our base for the production of Outlander is Ward Park Film and Television Studios, which is northeast of Glasgow in Lanarkshire. We had to operate in a bubble and saw very few people outside it. On the first day of filming, which fell in the teeth of a traditional Scottish winter, I found myself in the company of my faithful and ever-reliant driver, Davy Stewart. Davy's nickname is Hollywood, because he chauffeured big stars in his time, I like to think he considers me to be an ordinary fare, because he's always relaxed and great company on our rides. We share a passion for bad techno music, and Friday night in the car home can be pretty wild. Despite my fluid approach to call times, I can guarantee that he'll always get me there on schedule.